This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Go to the link in the description to get two months free. Also, stay tuned for the end because there's a giveaway. Alright guys, I'm going to be talking all about Kono Katashi, or A Silent Voice, or Shape of Voice now. So if you haven't seen it, you should probably watch the movie first, uh, cry, and then come back. A Silent Voice is a film directed by Naoko Yamada, no, not that Naoko Yamada, this Naoko Yamada, from Kyoto Animation. And when it was released, there was this huge discussion on whether this film or your name was better. And to be honest, both films might appear to be somewhat similar at first, but are fundamentally different. One is a film dedicated to the fantastical and ode to youth and how powerful love is, a film about the connections between people, and the other is a more grounded look at the lives of teenagers, the struggle with depression and anxiety especially, as well as being a film about searching for purpose and life. Both films have similar elements, but one takes a fantastical route and the other takes a more realistic stance. A Silent Voice doesn't want to waste too much time with its romance, which sucks, because that's my shit, man. No, no, while there are romantic elements, A Silent Voice wants to dig deep into the human condition. Humans are imperfect, and the film wants to talk about what makes people do things that are violent or selfish and make you comprehend the reasons as to why the characters are the way they are now. The film wants to demonstrate the human capacity for good, while still displaying all the bad humans are capable of, and it never truly states that yes, you are a bad person, yes, you are a good person, all it does is it lays everything out for you, and takes the viewer on a journey to discover why these characters are who they are, how they grow, and how they end up. To tell a story as complex as this, you need a good script and a good director. The story is adapted from an acclaimed manga of the same name, and the director, like stated before, is ya girl, Naoko Yamada. An absolute queen, she has helmed shows like K-On! and Tamako Market, as well as their movies. A talented illustrator, she knows exactly how she wants things to look, especially lighting. And I talked about this in my video on K-On! She knows all about lighting and framing. I'm currently attempting to create my own anime, and try to imitate and build upon techniques I see when watching films and animations to further improve my work. And if you have ideas like that, a place you can go to learn about animation and direction is Skillshare. And let me tell you, just like the title of one of the tracks of A Silent Voice composed by Kensuke Ushio, Skillshare is lit. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. For all you future storytellers, filmmakers, and creatives out there, Skillshare has sponsored this video so I can provide you guys with two months of Skillshare for free. If you want to learn about animation, there's a bunch of classes on After Effects animation and straight up traditional drawing. There's classes that teach you cinematography, how to make shot lists, which are important in the filmmaking process. Check out this class by cinematographer Zach Mulligan. And hey, want to learn how to create interesting characters and conflicts? Check out this class by Daniel Jose Older. Skillshare offers thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Now all these classes and way, way more can be yours if you sign up for Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. Becoming a premium member gives you access to everything in the site. Holy cow! Skillshare's under $10 a month! And even I use this site, guys. It's genuinely incredible, and I cannot recommend it enough. Please support the channel just by clicking the link in the description. Now there's many different ways to direct a scene, and Naoko Yamada really seems to focus on characters' expressions when they're at their most vulnerable, and then showcase just how alone they really are with a wide, or maybe a medium, and having the point of interest to one side. The film is directed and storyboarded to showcase isolation, and then this leads into the finale in which the protagonist is surrounded by his peers and eventually decides to let them in. But why is this a problem? Dude, like, just stop covering your ears. Shoya, the protagonist, has been struggling with social anxiety and depression ever since he bullied a deaf girl, Shoko, our other protagonist, when he was little. Is it a form of karmic justice? Maybe. But the movie doesn't play it out to be that way, and more so just showcases that while Shoya was a terrible kid growing up, the kids around him were just as bad. The bully got bullied, and it isn't seen as a win because <laughs> the bully got what he deserved. It's shown to be just as cruel and just as humiliating as when Shoko was bullied by Shoya. And there's always people saying that they can't watch the movie or they don't like it because Shoya was an asshole when he was little and can't sympathize with him now that he's older, and it's problematic to do so. And to those people I say, I am so sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. I didn't know you had a Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. We'll see you in Sweden. The movie is as grounded as can be. Again, everyone is flawed, even Shoko. 
In an interview with Nobuaki Doi, director Naoko Yamada was asked the question, what was in your mind when depicting this full range of characters' emotions, including the unpleasant aspects? And Naoko Yamada responded with, I am neither a judge nor a god. I tried not to judge what they did, what they saw, what they felt, and all the circumstances surrounding them. I just try to understand and respect their emotions and actions, which consisted of many layers and reasons. Yamada wanted to represent the world as a profound and gentle place that accepts everything. And that's the main purpose of the film, and if you notice, there really isn't an antagonist. The movie also never really wants to blame characters for their mistakes, it lets the characters in said film blame others. It's the movie's intention to show the audience how things play out, how characters develop and mature. The path Shoya takes is essentially a path of redemption, but it's not one about redeeming himself to others, it's about redeeming himself for his own good. He begins the movie by planning a suicide, only not to go through with said act, and eventually keeps on living life. The story is about what Shoya is going to do now that he's decided not to die, and he gets caught up in caring about someone else so much that he forgets to care about himself. And by forgetting to care about himself, he leads the one person he cares about so much to believe she is the catalyst for all his problems. The movie portrays social anxiety in a manner that isn't extremely exaggerated or has the main character freak out whenever someone talks to him, it's subtle glances at another direction. More importantly, Shoya never looks at people's faces, he's always looking down at their feet. This is most evident in the final ten or so minutes of the film, which sometimes has the camera represent Shoya's gaze and we look at the floor, not at people's faces. An incredibly efficient and honestly beautiful way the film portrays anxiety while also showcasing how distant the protagonist is to the rest of the world is by placing X's all over the faces of people in the background. In the manga the film is based on, this is used and the film decides to keep this design choice, which is honestly a bit ballsy considering they added the X's after animating. Which means that the animators actually animated the faces and then the editors placed X's on top of them hiding the animation that was put in. The entire purpose of the film is to show the struggle of Shoya and Shoko and how they mutually help each other to better themselves as people. Shoko's story is a lot more depressing than Shoya's. The fact that her character is deaf is incredibly important because this is a factor in how people perceive and approach her. The character doesn't want pity from people, she wants to be treated like everyone else, she wants to be respected, but she doesn't actually respect herself. Shoko, throughout the film, blames herself for not being able to make friends, even though it's not her fault. She thinks of herself as the reason why things go bad and not the other way around, and that's her conflict. That's why she cleans up Shoya's table when bullies right all over it. She feels he doesn't deserve that kind of treatment, but she, she does. It's the blaming of oneself for everyone's problems that leads to Shoko living in isolation, with only her family to support her. Similar to Shoya now, the two characters are all alone, but for different reasons, and one blames others, and the other blames herself. It's interesting that there's actually a romantic angle in A Silent Voice, I think it all stems from this notebook. Young Shoko uses this notebook as a means to communicate, it was something she used to talk to others and make friends. Once that was no longer possible, she left the school and I'm assuming never really tried to befriend others, as the way she copes is through self-blame in a way. So when Shoya finds her at the sign language club holding the notebook, the thing she used to connect with the world, she tears up and accepts him as a friend, as he did what Shoko did so long ago. The journey Shoko takes of essentially self-loathing is really tough to watch, man. The movie just constantly guts you again and again. There's something to learn, to take away from a silent voice, and that's the realization that people can feel regret over terrible acts they've committed. Hell, I've done some seriously shitty things. Probably not as far as, you know, bully a little deaf girl, but there are things I'm not proud of, and I think this film really helps viewers come to terms with their own faults and insecurities by showcasing a group of characters that have to do this. These characters have to overcome their own faults and insecurities in order to push through their lives and be truly content. The film teaches us the importance of genuinely understanding one another. It's not necessarily about loving, it's about understanding. For example, Naoka is easily one of the most interesting characters in the film, attempting to help Shoya as she sees him as a victim. She wants to get the friends back together and get Shoya to like her. She cares deeply about him and is actually the one that nurses him back to health every day when he's in a coma. A good parallel between her and Shoko is that while Shoko believes herself to be the cause of problems, even though she does nothing wrong, Naoka actually does things that are wrong and doesn't try to hide it. 
At the end of the day, Naoka and Shoko will probably never love each other, they'll never truly care about each other, and that's okay. No one can love literally everyone they encounter, that's not a normal thing, and this film totally confronts that, and shows that even people who don't necessarily like each other can understand each other, respect each other, and live in the same world. That's why all the characters have flaws, from Tomohiro and his almost intensely protective personality, to Satoshi's quickly tempered behavior that was cut from the film, as well as Kawai's victim complex which directly leads to everyone antagonizing Shoya, which in turn leads to Shoko believing it's better if she went away. The characters are flawed to show that the world isn't perfect, but all these characters are doing their best to deal with the hand they've been dealt and become better people, little by little. That's what I think is so beautiful about A Silent Voice, it's that everyone in the film is trying to do better, to live their best lives. I haven't even talked about Yuzuru yet. Yuzuru's entire purpose in the film is to try and help her sister as much as she can. It's almost as if it's her only purpose, until she finally gets the help she needs from Shoya and his friends, and gains respect for herself and discovers the value of life, leading to her wanting to live hers. At the end of the film, we get Shoko wanting to fix what she destroyed, as she calls it, wanting to put back together the new friendships that Shoya broke away from. And when Shoya awakens from his coma, Shoya wanting to help Shoko tells her that it's him that has to say he's sorry, and wants to apologize properly to everyone. The two having reached the lowest points in their lives, Shoya finally declares that he wants Shoko to teach him how to live, which in turn provides both with a pillar of support, each other. It's important to talk about these characters having suicidal thoughts and actually attempting to take their own lives. While these are fictional characters, the feelings they have are legitimate emotions that real people go through, and I love how this movie doesn't just deal with the thoughts of the characters that go through the motions of wanting to end their own life, but also displays the effect something like this has on the people that love said person. We see how these characters grieve and struggle, and it's not easy, it's not pretty, and it's very eye-opening. And it's important to see that these characters eventually learn that this is not the way to do things, that things get better, that there's always help. And that help could be in the unlikeliest of places. At the very end of the movie, Shoya can't face his fears, face his anxiety head on. Shoya has Shoko help him accept everyone and he has to metaphorically stop shutting people out and look up. And it's this beautiful, cathartic moment, finally accepting not just the world around him, but truly accepting the people he cares about as well. Shoya finally sees what he's been blocking out, and that's life. The movie wants these characters, good or bad, to face the consequences of their decisions head on, and have them discover how to face these anxieties they're dealing with, and that's with the help of others. No one can face their problems and worries alone, that's what the original manga and the film are trying to teach us. We all struggle, we all make mistakes, and it's how we deal with these mistakes and own up to these mistakes that define who we are. Kono Katashi, A Silent Voice, or Shape of Voice is easily one of the best anime out there, and I urge you to check it out if you haven't. Alright everyone, Brown Table is doing a little giveaway. Major thanks to Discord moderator Alchemax for making this possible. We're gonna give away this incredibly sexy, medium-sized Your Name shirt to one of you chads. To enter, like the video, subscribe to the channel to become a chad. Now this is the cool person type of chad and not the misogynist type of chad. We're keeping it family friendly over here. And comment, shirt please. Now I can check comments, but to know that you actually subbed and liked the video, send proof that you did so to the Brown Table Discord server or the Brown Table subreddit on Reddit. The links are all in the description. And hey, if you send me proof that you used the Skillshare link, your chances of winning the shirt go up even more. Good luck, Chads. Also, shout out to Otter on the Discord for making these uh, incredible photoshops. Thanks to uh, Low Top Phelps for coming up with the idea to do this. Uh, roast me on the Discord, link in the description. Anyways, Chads, I'm working on new merch. It should be very spicy. Next video is the Return to Zootopia fan film as a whole film and not split into episodes, as well as a director's commentary version, which will be a premiere. So it's like on Blu-rays and DVDs when the director of something talks about making it as the movie goes on. And before we leave, I want to thank my lovely, lovely patrons. They are amazing, as always. 
I wish I could do more, but as a college student, I am dying and I have no time. So I really appreciate all the support they give to me and the channel. It really means a lot. It really helps out. So uh, thank you very, very much. So thanks for coming to the table, everyone, and I'll see you all next time.